Here's a woman who uh, I assume is American. She's from Staten Island, right? And she's talking about her plans for Gaza. We love the Gaza Strip. We can't just take a whole strip of land and, and say Israel's, Israelis can't live there. That doesn't make sense. This is our sovereign state. Would you live there? Of course. By the beach? Oh, for sure. Yes, my husband's also talking about uh, building. He has a, a yeshiva, a Talmudic Institute here. Uh, so building a branch in uh yes in aza we have lists already about 500 families that are willing on the drop of a hat to just move into uh we have north central and south uh gaza and people can start building towns we have names of the towns we have where we're building them it's, it's already being planned and we have people signed up you can't leave it without jews in the gaza strip it's too big a piece of land it's too important for us to let it become Hamas town, as you call it, full of terrorists. Have any of these people seen themselves? Like um, any of the people that you've interviewed? Has anyone? I've been waiting for um, to get kicked out of all these WhatsApp groups and all yeah. these Telegram groups. Um, and waiting for them to, you know, I've been checking daily. No one, see, they, they either don't care or they, they have not kicked me out yet. I'm still in all of their groups. They're still organizing aid blockings daily. Um, and I'm seeing what they're doing and when they're doing it. Um, they have not removed me from any of the chats. And something else that was interesting is the criticism that people made of Netanyahu, like being a pawn of Biden's and, a, mm -hmm. and criticism of Biden for like stopping Israel from doing what Israelis want yeah. to do. Yeah. Which I mean, is kind of stunning. They oppose Netanyahu from the right. Right. They, they all believe that Netanyahu um, should not be um, listening or taking advice or um, taking direction from the international community. They, they believe that Netanyahu is way too liberal, way too soft, um, and, and follows the lead of, of Biden. Just here to do what needs to be done. If uh, people, uh, the government or other people are not doing what they need to do, we'll do it. I have no message to anyone. We're here to do. Bibi is a puppet of Biden, because we cleaned all Gaza, except the Vafiyah, we know all the live hostages are in Rafiah. Why aren't we going in there? Because Biden asked us not to. That's the only reason. There's no reason not to. Of course, we have to listen uh, to our sugar daddy. We have to listen you know, to the biggest superpower in the world because they're standing on our side, on the democratic Western side. But the Israeli public doesn't want it. And we're here to make sure that until 4 o'clock, 4.30, when they close, make sure no single truck will bring, feed our enemies while they molest, while they rape, and while they kill the hostages they took for five months ago. And they would say that um, every, this is in one interview, um, every president is anti-Semitic. None of them care about Jews. They, they want to see Jews dead. That's what they would tell me. And so they, they hate every country and they think um, Netanyahu is listening to every country too often. Was there anyone, I mean, why would there be? Because these were people literally protesting aid coming in. But was anyone like, well, we think Hamas is bad. Palestinians are, are not all bad. There's a difference between Hamas and Palestinians. You, you heard that very rarely. These these, these were very because um, it's collective these, punishment. So why would they they they'd be lying if they said that? They right? they weren't saying that. They were saying that um, they were trying to argue that them blocking humanitarian aid into Gaza right. is is uh, the peaceful solution because it's the quickest way to end the war. And war is bad. We are anti-war, and we want the war to end as fast as possible. But they, to them, the end of the war means the death of all people in Gaza. Right. And I remember a guy saying, we want, we're doing this because we want them to turn on Hamas, basically, what, is what he was saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They were, they, as if they are um, placing their own sanctions on, on, on Gaza. They are um, starving them to the point where, if they are hungry enough, they will turn against Hamas. Right. Yeah. Right. We saw a little bit of this young man in the, in the trailer but here's uh, that kid, uh, I just thought, the one who talked about lollipops, but I mm. just thought it was in, worth playing what he had to say because he's so, again, um, vocal and open about it. The best way is to transfer them to Europe. Europe already accepted past the 10 years, accepted uh, more than 100 million refugees. I don't think that another million and a half refugees would make any difference for the Europeans. And as the Bible says, this place is, 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 is for us, it's promised for us, so they can starve to death. 
um, to pay on the things that they've done to us on the 7th of October. Would you look in Gaza once all is said and done? Totally, totally. If my wife would agree for that, uh, totally I would go live over there. Uh, so there was two movements, I guess you would say, of people I was following around. One is the the group of these people who were blocking the humanitarian aid, and the other was a group of settlers who were um, meeting in Sorot, and which is a mile away from the Erez crossing into Gaza, and they were um, going together into Gaza with plywood, with drills, um, with nails, and they were building what they would call symbolic outposts. Right. And they, their idea was that um, they didn't really care about the war. They, were, they cared about the, the first day after the war. The first day after the war is, is what, what's the government going to do? It, it needs to allow us to, to resettle in Gaza. So the military would allow them to walk into Gaza and build these, these symbolic structures. And um, of course, nobody else is allowing, like no one is allowing, a normal civilian cannot go into Gaza, but it's the, the military and the political apparatus in Israel is so, um, so um, controlled by the settler movement. And so the, the settlers have more power than the military does at some of these border crossings. The military, you know, d- does not dare to hurt any of these settlers because those are the people who are voting Netanyahu into power. And those, that, that's, that's their boss, essentially. That's the way they see it. So they were allowing them to cross into Gaza and build these illegal outposts. And that was the other half of the, um, you know, extremist fanatic movement that I was covering, the people that were going into Gaza often and, and trying to build things. Well, here's another example of someone who was uh, uh, disappointed in, in Netanyahu not being more forceful. From 2002 until recently, we've been through, a, I would say, kind of intifada, a journey of murder which they use knives to kill the Israelis, they use, in, a, in many cases, guns, they use uh, these pistols, these cocktail molotovs. They um, kill a lot of Jews, but we have airplanes, you see? We, have, we can erase them one second. Once we, once we use what we have, once we, we know how to use our assets, uh, you know, and not afraid to use what we have, we destroy Gaza. We annihilated a huge part of Gaza. We can do it also, the Palestinian Judea and Samaria and the West Bank. We have weapons we can use. We can use. We need the, the right circumstance. We need the, the right, right leaders. We have goddamn sexy F-16 airplanes. So we can annihilate all our enemies and tell the last of them we decide to do so. We get over this kind of conception and kind of state of mind that we are subjected to the world, the community of the world and the nations of the world, and we are somehow limited. But it's only temporarily. We will unleash our strengths very much soon. I mean... Unbelievable. Just like saying out loud the things that people will usually criticize them for, you know, not being part of like the world community. That um, that guy, actually, he was explaining to me this didn't make it into the, the, the video, but um, he actually a lot of people were saying this, just how Israel uh, for their next war, they need to have a domestic arms industry so they don't have to listen to the U.S., um, to get more weapons. They can do whatever they want because they're getting their weapons from themselves. Um, a domestic arms industry was, uh, was a, a thing you would hear over and over because a main problem was that Netanyahu was um, in a tight spot and he, had, he was forced to listen to um, the international community in order to continue his war.